And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof deodorant body powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now let's meet our What's My Line panel of well-known personalities whose lines you already know. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> I left a brilliant young humorist who will shortly grace the Broadway boards in a new production, The Pink Elephant, Mr. Steve Allen. I always wanted to grace boards. And on my left, <laughs> a young lady who's known to you all, I'm very sure, because she's one of the most popular uh, ladies in radio and television, Grace Boards, Sir Arlene Francis. <laughs> And on my left, uh, a man from Florida with a coat of tan from Florida, our brainy, zany Hal Dimples Block. It's a Saxony sun tan. And on my left, one of the greatest men I've ever met, and on George Washington's birthday, I might say, he may not be Washington, but he's George all the way. John Dick. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we have a few visitors who brought with them some interesting and, we hope, difficult occupations for the panel to guess, so that our guests will go home with some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later, but right now it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger, whose job they've got to spot. So would you sign in, please, sir? William? Hart, net with a double T. William Hart. Right. Now, first of all, Mr. Hartnett, would you be good enough to tell us where you're from? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Well, they do say that everybody from Missouri has to be shown. I have a panel over there that want to be shown, too. So will you walk over and see them, please? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> May I see the label to see if it's a Missouri label? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it is. It doesn't it say, is, is it? <laughs> All right, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hartley, will you come over here now, please, and sit down next to me? And uh, at this point, if you know our uh, normal practice, we always give the panel one free wild guess as to what your line may be on the basis of their brief acquaintance. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a lexicographer. Uh, wow. Lexicographer? Mr. Allen. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's from St. Louis. I think he's a second baseman. Miss Francis. Uh, I think he makes bad mitten birds. Mr. Block. <laughs> I think he makes good mitten birds. <laughs> no, nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Hartnett, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. The panel's got to dig, Mr. Hartnett, and the rules are very simple. Every time you can dredge a no answer out of them, it costs them $5. We keep a record of all that up here. Ten of these no's, you win the game. One last bit of help for the panel. Mr. Hartnett is self-employed. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Steve Allen. Oh. Uh, Mr. Hartnett, is there a product of any kind connected yes. with what you do? There is. Let's see. Is it a product that uh, I might possibly ever come into connection with, into contact with? Yes. Is it the kind of a thing that might possibly make people happy? Yes. Could hmm. sometimes, certainly. Could? Well, could it also make them unhappy? Yes. <laughs> if I had uh, come into contact with this product or used it or whatever, uh, could you tell it if you stood close to me? Yes. <laughs> uh, you said a minute ago it could make people unhappy. Hmm. Uh, is it by any chance something that, uh, you might be able to drink? Yes. Well, if a fellow were to use, uh, 
too much of this, could he feel pretty miserable? <laughs> yes, there are circumstances, certainly, under which if you use too much of it, you'd feel pretty miserable. <laughs> um, is this a cheaper drink generally than scotch? <laughs> mm, yes, generally it's cheaper than scotch. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, during Prohibition, did they ever make this in the bathtub? No. no. <laughs> During Prohibition, they did not make it in the bathtub. One down and nine to go, Miss Spencer. Is this a product that might ever be used for medicinal purposes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, no, by golly, he's right. Yes. Well, good, gee. Uh, could you buy this product in a drugstore? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Block. Hmm. Does it have anything to do with nature? Yes. Is it something that might have something to do with rain? Yes. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> is it something you might put in your hair to, yeah. to make it soft, like rainwater? Well, to the degree that, you know, I mean, there are very few things in nature that wouldn't have something to do with rain, and certainly uh, Rainwater would make your... Well, there's soft, something to I do, suppose. like with hurricanes, which has nothing to do with rain. Yeah, that's true. Well, but there's rain in a hurricane, you know. <laughs> well, go Pop. on from there. Mm -hmm. make, it could make your hair soft, yes. And you say it's something that you would drink? Yes. Yeah. Is it, is it uh, have to do with water? Yes. Now! <laughs> I'll have a conference with All right, you can have uh, 20 seconds for a conference. I don't know. I had an idea maybe he could be in the rainmaker business. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Blunt. Could that be it? <laughs> Go ahead. Are you a fellow that puts dry ice ever up there with aeroplanes and stuff? Yes. Now, let's see. What could he be? <laughs> rainmaker? Rainmaker is right. Good panel. Actually, uh, actually, Mr. Hartnett has um, made a point of telling me that scientifically he often increases, using silver iodide, increases rainfall, and probably does that a good deal more often than actually makes rain itself, but it would come under the general classification of rainmaker. We thought it was going to give you a lot more trouble, a lot more trouble. I'm sorry it didn't, because Mr. Hartnett wants uh, his prize money to go to uh, uh, Boys Town. In Missouri? That's right. Boys well, make it $50. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Let's make it $50. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Hartman, for being my guest. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, while we think of Boys Town, mm -hmm. I have one quick word to say to you. Tonight ends what I think uh, you've all become familiar with during the week, and that's Brotherhood Week. Sometimes when we think of setting aside these separate weeks, uh, we think perhaps uh, people might get an idea they should practice brotherhood, which is, after all, sponsored by the National Conference of Christians and Jews just for this one week of the year. Don't do it that way. All that they really want to do is to remind you to practice brotherhood 52 weeks in the year. You do that, you'll find your life's much happier and also much simpler. Now let's see what our panel can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Bernard... Not McFadden, Bernard Spooner. How are you? Spooner? Uh, Mr. Spooner, first of all, tell us where you're from. Manhattan, New York. Manhattan? Well, then you're right at home, so you won't mind taking a small trip. Will you walk down in front of the panel for me, please? Spooner, it's nice to see you away from the start. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Spooner. Thank you. All right, Mr. Spooner, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me, and uh, on the basis of that... Uh, Fine Manhattan residents of yours, and the look that our friends in the panel have had at you, we give them one free guess. We always begin those free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mr. Spooner is a jolly toy maker. A jolly toy maker. Mr. Allen. I'll guess that Mr. Spooner is in the silverware business. Silverware business. Miss Francis. <laughs> a specialist. Knives and forks, too, I presume. <laughs> well, as Spooner's. Uh, I think that he's a diamond cutter. Mr. Block. I think he's a naval inspector in an orange grove. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have another look at Mr. Spooner, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel's got the big.
Mr. Spooner, I think probably you know the rules. Every no answer costs the panel five dollars. Ten of these no's, you win the game. We keep everything okey dokey right up here. You see? That's where the record's kept. All right, Mr. Spooner is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with, uh, well, Mr. Block. Well, thanks a heap. Uh, do you deal in the product, Mr. Sto yes. uh, Spooner? Yes. <laughs> Spooner. Uh, is this product something that might make people happier? Yes. Is it something that a person like myself might use? I would think it was possible that you would nearly need one of these. <laughs> I'm beginning to think of the type of product this might be. <laughs> is this something that might come in contact with the body? Yes. Is it something that might be worn? Yes. Might it ever be worn on special occasions? Yes. <laughs> well, on a uh, formal occasion, would this no. ever be worn with a white tie? No. <laughs> Wait, we gotta have a small conference. Mr. Spooner is the expert. I never have had any need for this particular product. He says no on a formal occasion, so that's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, I'm probably far afield, but uh, Mr. Spooner, is this product ever worn by anything aside from human beings? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Nice field you were in there for a minute. <laughs> ah! Is it something that uh, could be purchased in the average department store? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, then might it be uh, purchased in a special kind of shop? Yes. Uh, is it worn? Uh, would it be considered a piece of apparel? When it is worn, it would come under the general category of apparel, yes. I see. So one presumes that this is only worn at special... What just happened? <laughs> Down, Gilmore. She acts uh, like she forgot to wear one. <laughs> <laughs> the butt of that joke if we could have a conference for a minute because she had an idea. Well, I'll give you 15 seconds for a conference. Yeah, what, oh, what, I mean, I'm, I'm not what haven't you worn, Doris? I'm, I'm Mr. Not. Block, will you sit down, please? All right, Miss Gilgallon. I'm really not in the groove, so don't take a chance in it, but you might ask if it was ever used for restraining purposes. <laughs> but don't you mean like a, a girdle? You mean to be a girdle? <laughs> All right, 15 seconds are up. Not Ms. like Francis. a girdle. Uh, well, uh, to follow along Dorothy's line, would this garment, or whatever it is, uh, restrain one in any way, Mr. No. Hart? No. That would make it four Thank dollars you, to Dorothy. go, oh, Mr. Yeah. Hart. I'm glad you're not wearing it, though. Kind of glad we had the conference. <laughs> <laughs> is this something that, uh, by any chance, uh, both sexes might? Yes. Both sexes might, yes. And Dorothy didn't wear one? <laughs> Would I possibly wear one? It is, the point has been made that you probably need one, but you go on from there. This I agree with you. What? <laughs> Mr. Spooner said, this I agree with you on. <laughs> Mr. Spooner may be a relative of you. <laughs> is this something that also could be worn by children? No, no. They wouldn't wear it, I don't think. Five down and five to go. Miss Kilgallen. When this is worn, does it show? No. Mm-hmm, six down and four to go. Mr. Allen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank Tony you, Bennett. <laughs> uh, does this have anything to do with the physical well-being of the person who wears it? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Would it, uh, could it be purchased then, say, through a medical supply house or something? <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. I'm going to give you 30 seconds more to try Oh, well, I can't do it in 30 seconds. But if it is worn, is it worn from the waist up? Mm. Is it worn from the waist up? Yes. And also worn from the, uh, would it be, uh, cover any part of the body from the waist down? Mm. Sometimes. It could. If yes. you're sloppy. Uh, is it, <laughs> is it something that might be worn in a hospital? No. Eight down and two to go, and I'm going to ring the clock down here. This what is going to kill you when you hear it. Mr. Spooner makes bulletproof vests. <laughs> Mr. Spooner, you won by default. 
So that means you've won the full prize of $50. More than that, we trust you enjoyed your visit, because it was a lot of fun having you with us, sir. Thanks very much for coming. Good night. <laughs> we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel would recognize our guest right away, so as usual, we've provided them with blindfolds. And are those blindfolds on in place, panel? Yes, um, sir. Yes, good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery celebrity, we always get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in show business? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you the type of person in show business who appears before the public? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever appear on the stage? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you sing by any chance? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, that's a yes. Uh, do you ever sing on records? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, are they the jukebox type of records? Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> are you female? Beg your pardon? I said, is our guest female? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hesitate to ask a lady this question, but have you more than one head? She has? <laughs> Are there two of you? Are there what? Are there two? Are there two whole persons? Mm mm. Uh, uno momento, small conference, girl, uh, uh, gather around. Wow. We have just had a uh, conference, a committee has met, we've come to a decision and we will now give you the answer. The question was, are there two of you? Mm -hmm. Yes. There, there are two. Mm -hmm. Are there more than two? Mm-hmm. Are there three? Mm-hmm. This may be bigger than all of us. <laughs> Does it stop there? Beg your pardon? Does it stop there? Are there just three? Mm -mm. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> then I presume there are more than three. Very good, Mr. Allen. <laughs> are there four of you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Does it stop there? <laughs> mm -mm. That's too bad. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. This may be a girl's softball team for a moment. <laughs> We're up to four, are we? There are more yep. than four now, I think. Is, is there one more of you? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, is that all? Mm-hmm. Oh, there are five. Mm-hmm. Well, that's heaven. Now, who could it be? The rich brother. <laughs> uh, there are five of you. Are you all girls? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a yes. Uh, uh, let me see, what could they do together? Do you sing together? Mm-hmm. All of you are sort of a harmony outfit? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, who's oh. beside the Andrews sisters? Yeah. Uh, the DeMarco sisters. The DeMarco sisters, right. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> there are more than five. There are six of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing, and they don't need a bass, unhappily. And I'd love to be able to sing with them, but I must say it was wonderful watching your face, Dorothy, as you tried to figure out how many heads there were over there. <laughs> I thought, good if that girl changes her voice well. <laughs> <laughs> and may I say to all five DeMarco sisters that it was awfully nice of you to come and visit with us. We had a lot of fun. I think the panel enjoyed itself as much as you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have Thank a you so much. That's Dear panel. <laughs> and panel, I want to notice something. We even asked the DeMarco sisters to take their shoes off so that you wouldn't hear them walking in. That's why they all came in holding their shoes in their hands.
Question we can do with another challenger. Would you complete the signing in, please, ma'am? Daisy Whitten, is that right? <laughs> now, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Whitten? Yes, sir. You look awfully worried, and you don't have to look worried. You've got nothing but friends here. <laughs> uh, where are you from? Ashboro, North Carolina. Ashboro, North Carolina? Yes, well. Would you be good enough to take just a quick walk down in front of the panel, turn right around and walk back again, because time is running short. You had to be married, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Whitten, would you come back here now, please, and sit down right next to me? And on the basis of that um, quick walk and your handwriting on the board, we always give our friends one free guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she raises magnolias. Mr. Allen. I think she lowers magnolias. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she's a mathematician, and how wishes he had her number, huh? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Mr. Block. What can I say? I think she's the mother of the DeMarcos. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has it, so we'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Whitten. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's got the day. All right, we'll get everything back to zero here, and then the rules are very easy, Mrs. Whitten. Every no answer you get from the panel costs them five dollars. We keep the record up here. Ten no's, the game is all yours. Mrs. Whitten is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work outdoors, Mrs. Whitten? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Block. Do you have a number? <laughs> <coughs> uh, do you deal in services? Yes. Do you also deal with the product? Yes. Is this a product that's used by both men and women? Oh, yes. This is something that's used in everyday life. Yes, it's susceptible to use in everyday life. Well, thanks a heap. Yes, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, do, do people come to you, Miss Whitten? Do people, do people come, come to you? For what? <laughs> for the, for the product. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you say that this product was more apt to be used on special occasions than every day by most people? I would say, and I think Mrs. Whitten would agree, that you could describe the circumstances under which it would be put to use as a special occasion, yes. Uh, is this something that I could hold in my hand? Yes. Uh, is it something that is not worn? Is it is something that is not worn? Yes, yes, it is something that is not warm. Is it something that is not eaten? Yes. Yes, it is something that is not eaten. <laughs> ah! Uh, is, is there anything um, dangerous about this, or potentially dangerous, or exciting, or...? There, yeah, boy, well, just a moment, isn't it? <laughs> anything connected with her is exciting. Well, that's very nice, Mr. Block, and true. I would say that there are circumstances under which this could be dangerous and exciting, although I must, in all justice, say that that is not normally the expectation. Well, then, this is something that things could go wrong with. Well, to if the degree that anything uh, that has uh, modern appliance can have something go wrong with it, this might have something. Does this have any movable parts? Does it have any yes. movable parts? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it ever used in the kitchen? It'd be a silly place to use it, wouldn't it? That would be three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. I take it then it would be nor no more normal to use it in another part of the home. Mm -hmm. well, would that yes. part of the home yes. possibly ever be the bathroom? The bathroom? Mm -hmm. The powder room? No, I wouldn't think so. That's the bathroom. <laughs> or the powder room. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Would it ever be seen by anybody that might come into the house? Would it be in a place where it might show, I mean? Well, I would give you a no on that because the normal expectation me. is that it wouldn't be where it might be seen. So that makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Block, and less than a minute to go. Would it be in the cellar? That would make it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, it would, would it be out of sight in a closet or drawer? Yes, it could be uh, out of sight yes. in a closet or a drawer. Uh, when it's in use, does it make people better off or happier? Yes. And when it's in use, it's taken out of the closet or drawer. Is that it? No, they crawl yeah. in with it. Uh, <laughs> 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 Mr. Allen. Do you ever plug it in? Beg your pardon? Do you ever plug it in the wall? Yes, and you have one more question. Oh, Peter, 
haven't any idea what it is. Mothballs. Well, Dorothy, I actually I have to rule you out on time. It's too bad because I think you'd have gotten it, but we have run out of time, so you would get the full prize, Mrs. Whitten. It's an electric heating pad that Mrs. Oh. Whitten makes. Oh. And you get the full prize of $50. Thanks for being our guest. Good night. And now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll give you a preview look at one of the guests whose line our panel will be asked to try and identify on next week's program. But first, here's something to remember. The next week at the same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you possibly spot his line? Well, for the answers to these and a lot of other questions, be sure to join us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again, Stop It invites you to join What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And don't forget What's My Line on Wednesday nights on CBS Radio. Until we see you again then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Grace Boards, or Arlene. <laughs> good night, Hal. So where are the DeMarcos? <laughs> good night, John. So good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production in association with the CBS Television Network.